no, seriously, Angela, what kind of girl is she? Well, I wouldn't exactly call her a girl. She's a woman. Oh, is she a Raquel Welsh woman or a Mother Teresa woman? <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, you're wrong. She's beautiful, she's elegant, and she's got a great personality. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, that's it! That's it! That's the kiss of death. Oh, last time I heard that was Lois Iazino. She had to sneak up on a glass of water. <laughs> I thought this would be fun for you. Angela, look, I want you to get this account very badly. I really do. But where in my job description does it say I have to walk your clients? That's her. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to do my job. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve a dinner, and then I'm going to clean up. What about tomorrow night? I'm washing my hair. <laughs> Bonsoir, I'm Geneviève Péché. Hi, I'm Tony Maselli. I'm your date for tomorrow night. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to... Hey, oh. Oh, wait. The Who's the Boss podcast. Oh, you were going to say that part, too. Oh, uh, I, I wasn't supposed to? No, it was fine. Okay. That was a really good one. Why have I been doing this this whole time? <laughs> that was much better. <laughs> It almost actually sounded a little bit like Tony Danza. Well, maybe I maybe I practiced on the way home in the car. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> so, oh, uh, was I'm, there news? I'm Tori. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, I thought we had something. I'm Kevin, and we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. No, we have no news. No. Um, uh. Except that, ooh, it's like. It's 8.30 tonight, and we're already getting started. Usually, yeah. we don't start recording this podcast until about 10.15. So. And it ends about midnight. Yeah, and I'm excited about that. But right as we sat down to do this, our cat decided to get in the Christmas tree. Yeah. The no, Christmas tree was just shaking. Never a dull moment around here. The animals just wait until we're trying to do this, and then they do anything they can to annoy us. And so do the children. That's true. But they're being good tonight. Yeah. So, tonight we're going to discuss Season 2, Episode 21. It is called Not With My Client, You Don't. It first aired on March 18th, 1986. And without asking Tony first, Angela offers him as an escort to a potential client who represents a $10 million account. So, I mean, we'll get into this as we go on, but I feel like the title of this should be not with my housekeeper, you don't. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Okay. Also, I noticed on Amazon, they don't, <laughs> what? Nothing, it's just funny. They don't um, put a comma between client and you, and that really annoys me. Ugh. But <laughs> on, um, on the TV Guide listing of the episode, the Amazon titles, I feel I know, feel it's like, like they had an intern do it. Yeah, I mean, they mess up the order of the shows. Yeah, at any time the title, an episode there's is... One or two, there's a title that's wrong, right? Any time there is a part two, the first episode says part and then an I, and then the second episode <laughs> says part, capital I, and, and then, then lowercase lower I right. every somebody single time. <laughs> yeah, they had somebody doing this in the middle of the night. <laughs> Unless like, it's like some sort of algorithm that just there's yeah, probably needs to be fill in the blanks kind of a thing. So, this episode was written by two women, Don Aldridge mm. and Judith Bustani. Um, they, they've written quite a few episodes. I, as far as I can tell, they're not a married couple. Um, that would have been very progressive for yeah, 1986. Um, but no, but still great that this was, especially this episode being written by tw two women, I think, um, was kind of cool for the time. So, when... The episode opens, Angela comes into the kitchen, it's morning, everybody's getting ready for school and work, and she's speaking French, and Tony just says, oh, it's down the hall to the right. I know, that's a <laughs> classic joke whenever somebody <laughs> says something in another language. Assuming she's asking for the bathroom. That's, right. that's a definite dad joke, too. Yep. Um, she says, I'm just practicing because I'm going to land this Peche perfume account. So she's already dreaming about what it's going to be like when she has to go um, to France once Wallace and McQuaid is on the international map. Mm. And Tony's already fantasizing about having to go with her because he's going to have to keep her beret clean. Right. Whatever that means. 
<laughs> so then Jonathan's like, can I go too? And Tony says, not until you're done with your breakfast. And Samantha is wondering, so Mr. Pache, Pache. is coming to dinner tonight. And Samantha's hoping that he will bring perfume samples when he comes. <laughs> and sure. then Tony says, "What do you, do you think every time Lee Iacocca comes over, he brings Chrysler cars? Right, again, another Another Lee, Lee Iacocca Co- reference. Must have been. I feel like he was in the news a lot then yeah. and, and very, very well known. Right. Like, he was the Jeff Bezo, Bezo of that time. Sure, yeah. Like, the crazy millionaire. Not, right. not cra- like, crazy amount of money millionaire. Right. Like, or, or billionaire. Maybe a little whatever. crazy. <laughs> um, so, Angela's like, here, I'll help you out. So, she put some of the perfume on Samantha's neck. And now Samantha's very excited to go to school with the most expensive neck. Mm. So Mona <laughs> comes in. She's saying that something smells wonderful. And Angela assumes it's the perfume, but it's not. It's Tony's sauce, because he's getting dinner ready for that night for when Mr. Pesce. It's like Monsieur. I, I'm not even going to try to say Monsieur what? or whatever. Mis- so I'm Monsieur. just going to call him Mr. <laughs> That's fine. I'm an American from Florida and California, so any kind of accent I do is going to be horrible. Um, so Mona takes the sauce and dabs it behind her ears. <laughs> like it's perfume. <laughs> right. So Tony's like, oh, when somebody nibbles on your ear, they really get their money's worth. And she's like, yeah, sometimes they even ask for seconds. Mm, yeah, but um, sh- yeah, but so Mona. Mona joke. So Angela's like, okay, I got to get to work. How do I look? This man is surrounded by the most glamorous women in the world. And uh, Mona says, oh, don't worry. You have nothing to worry about. I'll be here for dinner tonight. Again, just, Another I mean, poke. what is it? 7.45 in the morning and Mona's knocked her down like three times already? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, at work, they're all getting ready for Mr. Pache to arrive. They're very excited. This is apparently the largest account $10 million. But didn't we just watch an episode called Educating Tony where Angela came in and said she landed a $20 million account in 20 minutes? Sure. Yeah. No, so, actually, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. So it's not the largest. <laughs> it's, it is, not, but maybe it's because it's international. I don't know. I just feel like they probably have writers that are writing episodes, you know, at the same time. They're throwing numbers out there. They and don't so, know. so, yeah. So a lot of that continuity stuff gets. And then once they're shooting, no one's like, wait a minute. Didn't we already have an episode where it was $20 million? Because they don't expect that two nerds are going to be breaking down every episode 36 right. years later. Right. <laughs> It's a good point. They yeah. No one's going to remember something from four episodes ago. Right. So that minuscule. That they've watched once because there was, well, there was the VCR, I guess. But yeah. you just watched it and then it was gone. Okay, so Jim Peterson's back in this episode. Um, he's played by Earl Bowen. I cannot stand this character. And even in this episode, it, I mean, he, and not even, I mean, like he's solidifying my disgust for him. Um, Howie's also back, played by Howie Mendelson. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's what? Howard Stevens playing Howie Mendelson. Um, so they're all getting ready, and Angela says, I want this you know, presentation to be flawless. There's some joking going on with Howie about how he forgot that the meeting was today. And he's like, oh, I'm just kidding, just trying to get your adrenaline flowing. <laughs> and Angela's like, oh, you did it. Okay, you're fired. <laughs> right. And she's like, I just wanted to get your adrenaline flowing, too. And then he makes some joke about having to go. He said he went in his pants. Right. <laughs> he secret changed his pants. <laughs> um, so Jim asks her, OK, so what are you what is your plan to make sure that Mr. Pache enjoys his stay? And she says, well, I booked him at the best suite at the best hotel. In he's, town. Yeah. He's got. Uh, fruit baskets, mm-hmm. flowers, champagne, um, a limousine at his disposal. Dom, Dom Perignon, yeah. mind you, not just any champagne. I know, again, but 1975. I wasn't, wasn't going to try to be fancy with oh, the pr- pronunciation. Okay. No, no, I'm, you take it. You go for it. Um, Dom Perignon. Front row tickets to the hottest shows in town. And Jim's like, um, okay, but this is a very impor- important client. Shouldn't we anticipate his every need and desire? So, 
<laughs> Where's Jim's, this going? Right. Jim's like, oh, okay, well, that's all nice and good. But this guy's probably horny. And why don't, why haven't you gotten him a woman? So this is a really interesting storyline, I think, for them to broach at this point. And here, you know, I feel like Jim's kind of giving this thing like, you know, you're a woman in a man's world, in a man's job. And so you don't understand how men how do business. Yeah. Right. And so you need to understand how men do business. Jim is just a weasel. Yeah, he is. So now, on an 8 o'clock family show in 1980, we're going to hear the word hooker. Twice. So Angela says, if you're suggesting that I get a hooker, and he's like, oh no, hooker such a crass word. Let's say call girl. And she's like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm taking Mr. Pichet home with me to meet my family and have a nice home cooked meal. And Jim's like, okay, that's really lame, basically. She, right, pretty much. <laughs> um, she's like, I'm handling this my way with integrity and honor and mm. not yuckiness. <laughs> yuckiness, I love that line. <laughs> so for two of us who now, as adults, work in like corporate jobs. Like, how many sexual harassment videos have we had to watch? A lot. Right. So, I mean, and this is actual illegal activity. Like, prostitution was not legal in New York in 1986, as far no. as I'm remembering correctly. No. It's only ever been legal in Nevada, right? In the United States? Nevada, yeah. So, yeah, not only is this, like, crossing the line here, but it's also actually just illegal. As Angela and Jim are having this conversation, a woman walks into the office, and she says, I'm looking for Angela Bauer. Angela says, I'm Angela Bauer. She says, I'm jean via Piché from Piché Fragrances. So... I, I like when, before she walks in, Jim makes a reference to a the... It's if he's a French man, he goes, oh, oh. You know, right. got, got to do the stupid French accent. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, just, I forgot to mention that earlier. but It's just uh -huh. a slimeball character. He has been from the beginning, and he will be until his last episode. Is um, that right? Do you know that for a fact? Yeah, because his last episodes, I think, are coming up at the beginning of season three. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so Angela's like, you're a woman. And jean Vieve's like, uh, you're a woman, too. <laughs> <laughs> Already right out of the gate, you look like an idiot. <laughs> right. And so Angela's like, you know, oh, I'm just a little surprised. We were expecting Mr. Piché. And so it's funny that she, like, Angela probably runs into people all the time who are surprised that she is a woman in this position. And now she's just done that to somebody else. <laughs> but I think they just really were expecting the man, Mr. Piché, to come. But she right. says that he got... Um, Papa was summoned to a meeting with King Hussein. Mm -hmm. And Angela's like, oh, of course, I know how that is. <laughs> so, no, you don't. But she assures her that all they would need is her signature if they decide to go with the firm. And she's like, I hope you're not disappointed. Angela's like, no, <clears throat> we're not disappointed at all. I'm delighted. You know, I just wasn't expecting it. So, um, they, she's trying to get uh, jean Vieve into her office so that they can start discussing work. And on the way into the office, jean Vieve notices the calendar that is hanging at the water cooler. So I had been a little confused here. So this is a good callback to Hunk of the Month where Angela says, the calendar is hanging in my office at the, in the water, at, at the water cooler the water open cooler, to right. February. So it is now March. So has this calendar been up since the calendar was made and it's always at February? Or... Well, it would have to be because that's Tony's month. Right. right? Or did so they you like... want to flip the page. No, so it's been sitting on February through February and now it's March and it's still on February. But I got confused because I always thought that the woman who comes in, because jean Viev notices the calendar and then a woman walks in whose name is Cindy, and Angela says to her, I thought I told you to keep that in your desk. And Cindy's like, oh, it's such a waste, though. I always thought that was Rosie, and I thought they were continuing on the storyline about Rosie having a crush on Tony. Mm. But that is a different character. She looks very similar to Rosie with, like, the same hair. I but guess I they looked... just got rid of Rosie and well, Rosie yeah, moved so on with her life. The actress for Rosie was only in one episode, and this actress is only in one episode. So mm. maybe they just couldn't get the actress who played Rosie. She was busy, so they recast it. Or you can't I keep a Rosie around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like a Murphy Brown joke where Angela's going through 
secretaries, right? right? right. <laughs> but yeah, so... Okay, so Genevieve notices the calendar, and she's like, oh, that's a very handsome calendar. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, she reads the little ditty, which, if we all remember, says, Tony cleans with manly power for ad exec Angela Bauer. That's right. And she's like, oh, he's yours. And Angela says, yes, he works for me. He's my housekeeper. And she explains that her mother had the calendars made for a local cha- charity. Genevieve doesn't care about that at all. Right. But she, <laughs> she says it's a magnificent poem. It's a terrible poem, but she obviously likes Tony. So Jim's overhearing this, and he's like, you know, I was just congratulating Angela on her idea that she's bringing you home to her family tonight so that you can have a nice home-cooked meal. Right. Um, Feeds and, off of it. Yeah, because he's like, okay, so uh, we just found our entertainment our crew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So um, she says, yes, I just figured since you travel so much, you'd enjoy a home-cooked meal, and Tony is a superb cook. Mm-hmm. Um, Genevieve says she's a superb eater. <laughs> Um, so then Angela and Jean-Vier were talking like is there anything else you need while you're here in town she gives a list of things yes I'm going to need some secretarial help I would like an office to use and I I want a night with your housekeeper check oh wait a minute yeah and the look on Angela's face is fantastic She's like, I, I beg your pardon? Mm-hmm. Um, but Genevieve explains that she has a party that she needs to go to at the embassy the following night. And she would really like to have an escort. And so she would like to take Tony. And Angela's like, well, I'm not really sure what he has planned tomorrow. T- Jim's in the background motioning, $10 million. Right, right. right. <laughs> so they go into the office to discuss business and um, they leave. So... Tony, we go. We get to the house where Tony is busy making hors d'oeuvres. He has like platters of food out on the kitchen table that he's preparing for Mister Pichet's arrival. That's right. Um, Mona comes in and he hears it, and he's like, "Oh, don't, don't, don't sit on the couch." And he goes out in the living room, and Grover's on the couch. Mm, so Grover. he's like, "Okay, great, you're gonna go like." mess up my nice clean living room the kids are in there he's like everybody this sounds Mm -hmm. like me pretty much anytime we've just cleaned the living room (laughs) yeah please don't sit on anything please don't touch anything and it lasts for 30 seconds yeah and then there's crumbs everywhere so tony ushers the kids upstairs he ushers grover into the kitchen and he's straightening up the living room again this sweater we gotta talk about he did clap right before he of course he did yeah um but the, the sweater that Tony oh has gosh. on looks yes. like a little black box is on a swing. Right. Like, or a, a black box head with the hands are going right. out like... <laughs> the shrug emoji. The shrug emoji. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very interesting sweater. Mm. Um, so he goes back into the kitchen and Grover has just eaten most of the, the one hors of the orders. Yes. So Poor again... Tony. W- he worked so hard on those. I know. And once again, here's an example of Mona not being sorry enough for that her dog just did something dumb. Right. And Tony not being upset over hours of work that he just did being wasted. Yeah. I know. I Mona should have been mad. It's her dog, right? It is her dog. I can't remember, or at least apologetic. Like, I'm so sorry my dog just ate hours Your of hors work. D'oeuvres. I can't remember. What was the other thing that when that happened? Oh, well. I'll never remember what? right now. There was another instance where I thought Tony would be more mad and Mona would be more apologetic, but I don't remember it now. Angela comes in and Mona's like, oh, hi, how was your day with Mr. Pache? She explains he actually sent his daughter. And guess what? She's going to take Tony to the embassy tomorrow, to the French embassy tomorrow. The French, yeah. It's not just any embassy. Right. It's a French one. (laughs) Um, And... Mona says, well, that's very exciting. I wonder why he didn't tell me. And she says, because he doesn't know. Uh, So here we go again, Mona, with like neutralizing the room. (laughs) Right. And but like like suddenly, you know, uh, Tony, like Tony, some innocent man. I don't know. You set him up on a date and didn't. (laughs) I mean, I know (laughs) it's still not right, but it's Tony. Right. And and you know, as soon as he knows sees what she looks like yeah but mona we'll doesn't that. know but, that either right but, i know but still yeah. mona, and even mona what does mona care right exactly yeah mona goes out on a date every night 
So she says, you fix Tony up on a date without even asking her him. And Angela's like, it's not really a date. They're just going to be spending an evening together. Right. <laughs> um, so Mona's getting the gist that Angela basically served up Tony as, um, you know, an escort for this woman's party. And she's expressing her unhappiness about it in her own Mona way. I know. And she gives her that dig where she says he'll be excited about it or something. And then Mona says, who, him or the board of directors? Right, exactly. Basically who? saying you're Leap selling Tony. Tony's the hooker now. Right. Um, so we should we should stop saying hooker. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, we, we can Tony's say sex, the sex, sex worker. worker. <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> No, well, you can't I'm say saying prostitute it more either. just right, oh, okay. referencing what it was in the, in in the this show. So, yeah. but you're right, you're right. Um, so they go into the kitchen, and Tony's now trying to make another. Which I don't know what it is. What it cake? the hell is, is it this cheese? Thing? Is it flan? Is it play doh? It I, looks like play doh. I really don't know. And then what he gets mad and punches it. Yeah. So Angela, he says, "When's Mr. Pache coming?" Angela says he's not coming, and so Tony is mad and punches the right, cheese. Right, he's had it at this point. Buster, cake, whatever it was, was. It Grover. Grover. Grover ate I keep hors calling that dog Buster. <laughs> Grover ate the hors d'oeuvres. Now he's making some block of something pate. I don't oh, know what is, that is. Is that pate? I, I have don't no know. idea. It looks like it could be pate. But Angela explains his daughter's coming instead, and he's like, "Oh, okay." And then he starts trying to remold the thing he just smashed, right? That he just punched with his bare hand. <laughs> yeah. He's going to try to serve that. Um, and she says, "You're going to take her <laughs> to the embassy tomorrow night." So he's like, "Oh, does she need a driver?" She's like, "No, she just kind of needs um, an escort." So he's like, "What do you mean, like a blind date?" And Mona's like, oh, no, not at all like a blind date. Explain it to, explain it to him, Angela. <laughs> right. Like she, throws, um, she throws Angela right under the bus. Yeah. And Angela's like, oh, well, she knows what you look like. She saw the calendar in the office. <laughs> right. And he says that he does, he's not worried about what he, he looks like. He's worried about what she looks like. All right. So here we go again with the some... Dog jokes. Yeah, some negative women jokes. So he says... Angela says she's elegant and sophisticated, and Tony says so are French poodles. Right. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. Angela says she's elegant, sophisticated, and French, and then Tony says so, so are poodles. Are poodles. Yeah, that's right. That's right. what it was. That's the actual joke. So yeah, nice another dog joke about women. Um, and then she's like, "No, you know, you don't understand." And he's she's he asks what kind of girl she is. Angela says she's right. not a girl; she's a woman. Right. He says, is it a Ra- Ra- Raquel Welsh woman or a Mother Teresa woman? Oh, um, but Angela's like, you know, whatever you're thinking, you're wrong. Like, she's beautiful, she's elegant, and she has a great personality. This was a big joke. I don't know if this is still... I mean, I don't know how much you would hear this on TV anymore. But that was always a big joke. Like, as soon as someone said they had a good personality, that meant that they were ugly. Right, right. Yeah, right. That's like a common right. older joke. So Tony says that that is the kiss of death. The last time he heard that was Lois Iozino. <laughs> she had to sneak up on a glass of water. <laughs> Ugh, Lois Iozino. Oh my gosh, so bad. Okay, so Angela's like, I thought that you would have a good time. I thought that this would be fun for you. And he says, you know, where in my job description does it say that I have to walk your clients? <laughs> Again, another a dog, dog joke. joke towards women. But he's right. Like, why it is not in his job description as her housekeeper that he needs to take a woman out on a date. Right. And he's all high and mighty till he answers the door, though. Of course. So the doorbell rings. Tony. He goes out and um, he, she, Angela says, that's her. And he, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to do my job. So he goes out there. He says, I'm going to serve her dinner. I'm going to clean up. And tomorrow night I'm washing my hair, meaning he's not going. So he opens up the door and there's Jean Viev and he says, Hi, I'm Tony Maselli. I'm your date for tomorrow night. <laughs> I know. Classic Tony. Right. So now he's Suddenly. interested because Jean Viev is beautiful. Right. Oh, I need to talk about this actress. Okay, so this actress is a woman named Marissa Berenson. She, oh, yeah, right. You had some stuff on her. Life. She has had a fabulous life, like glamorous life. So um, her grandma she comes from like fashion royalty her grandmother was a fashion designer 
Um, her parents were very like artistic. I just picture them living these beautiful lives in like New York City. Um, she has a younger sister. She started modeling at a very young age. Okay. Um, she's best known for her role in Cabaret in 1972, where she then became very good friends with Liza Minnelli. So she's very good friends with Liza Minnelli. That's crazy. <laughs> um, she's been married a couple of times. She has a daughter who I believe is a model or, or actress now. And then her sister, whose name is Barry Berenson, was married to Anthony Perkins, the um, actor from Psycho. Um, she was married to him until he died in 1992. But then Barry Berenson was killed on one of the planes that flew into the World Trade Center. Oh, in right. I remember you saying yeah, that. Yeah, 2001. Wow. Um, but yeah, so this woman just has led a very interesting, obviously partially painful, but just sort of like life that you only think appears in actual movies. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I read an article about her where they were saying like she would always hang out at like the hottest clubs because she was this gorgeous model. But she never was into any kind of drugs or alcohol because she just it wasn't her thing. So mm. like she managed to go through all of Studio 54 and right, all of that. Right, like the super and, 70s drug. Right, and keep like a level head. Wow. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so when she did this episode, this is now 14 years after Cabaret, but she would have been pretty well known as a model and an actress. I didn't recognize her right away because... Um, I don't believe that she really acts that much anymore, if at all. Mm -hmm. But yes, at the time. So yeah, she had a really fascinating life. And I think, if I remember correctly, there's even a book about her that now I think I want to read. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, so now we cut to the night of the party. Right, so Tony's, Tony's coming like, down in his tuxedo. Yeah, so he's like, I'm all ready, and he comes down. This is the t tuxedo shot we get in the opening credits that was used for a while. And he's ready to go, and um, Angela's like, wait, I want to look at you. Like, this is the first time they've probably seen Tony this dressed up, you know, ever. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I like she wants to take a look at him like he's Jonathan, like a kid. Right, I know. Yes. I'm surprised she didn't want to take a picture of him before right. he left. Right. Give him a corsage. But also, I think it's kind of cute. Like, I just want to take in this, um, you know, this shot of you wearing a tuxedo right now. Because right. it's pretty impressive. Um, now, Tony says, I got to get going because I need to gas up the van. I know. Like, come on. Right. And it's like, really. I mean, he had to know she was going to say, you're not taking her out in your van right well first of all you would think that a limo would have just she said that uh jean Viev had a limo, limo at her disposal right so maybe he was just planning to go to the hotel and but mm. no they end up taking the jag out so mm. yeah it's ridiculous that he would really just show up to her hotel where in that van so <laughs> mona's hitting angela like giving the keys to the jag Okay, once again, we just had an episode before this one where Mona says she lets him drive the Jag. And he's driven the Jag on many occasions up until now. So I just thought it was funny that like Angela's not wanting to hand the key over and acting like he doesn't drive the Jag. I know, but every time he's driven it, she was in the car. Maybe it was... I guess so. Being reluctant to give it to him. Yeah, just to like take out for the night. As the passenger. But I mean, she let Mona drive the car. Mona slashed Flatten up the, the tires. tires yeah. And then she still let her take some like 21 year old guy on a date in it. So I would I would trust Tony way before I would trust Mona with the Jag. That's true. But yeah, again, I just think it's like probably different people writing episodes at the same time. And right. They don't, they don't really They know. don't notice these true. things. True. Yeah. True. Um, okay. So. So he goes, blah, blah, he goes blah, 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 blah. and leaves. Okay. So Angela's like, you know, you're going to dazzle the diplomats. Just remember, like, which fork <laughs> does what. Right. Um, and she says, I will be waiting up for a full report. Mm. And Mona says, if you should run into oh, that's, me. I didn't realize she said that. Yeah, because when we 
episode goes on later, obviously she's still awake. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, Mona says to Tony, "If you see, if you run, if you run into Mayor Koch, tell him we'll always have Albany." I know. Was <laughs> insinuating that she that Mona had an affair with Mayor Koch in Albany. Okay, so very Mona. Yeah. Um. So once Angela says she'll be waiting up for a full report, Mona says, "You might have a long time to wait." <laughs> right. She already knows. <laughs> yeah. So Mona is not naive. Like she knows what's most likely going to happen tonight. Um, and, but Angela is, or Angela just doesn't want to think about it. So, right. And she's like, they're going to go to the embassy and they're going to eat the rubbery chicken. Right. Yeah. And then they're going to use the proper fork and leave. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mother, you read sex into everything. Right. Is what, is what she what says. Yeah, and, but I love right, Mona's right reaction that. to that, which is, it's not exactly the fine print. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Um, so Angela kind of starts to realize that she just sends tony out basically as a sex worker right because mona says yeah they're gonna go to the malt shop for a shake afterwards right. like come on and mona knows mona knows how this ends sorry i keep no you're fine okay. um okay so they we didn't we don't get to see any of the embassy no I, that's that a would... whole set that they didn't want to <laughs> exactly. light and set up and build and put the proper forks out but so. i bet there would have been some funny stuff like here's the deal like tony is very nice looking he's a great sensitive sweet guy he is not the best in those types of situations it would have been like taking the nanny to the french embassy mm-hmm. in a way so i feel like there would have at least been a couple of embarrassing things like someone gets up to speak and he's chanting their name or <laughs> right something <laughs> Chanting Almost that. getting into a fight with someone like outside the bathroom. Well, yeah, yeah. which yeah will lead us to a later <laughs> note. But apparently not. He was on his best behavior. He dazzled. Everybody loved him. Um, they get to her hotel. They go back to Jean Vieve's hotel room, which is just an, a glamorous '80s disaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best like, way to put it because it's supposed um, to be all like. I don't know, Victorian looking? Yeah, what is this? Yeah, it's like Victorian. It's very pink. It looks like Angela's dream hotel room. Like right. if she could have her bedroom looking like this, she would be ecstatic. But it's like you can tell they use like 80s style furniture. I don't know. It's a, it is. It's a mess. Yeah. It looks like the Victorian era threw up right. in the 80s. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Yeah. So, um, Tony, but Tony's very impressed with it. And he said that it was a very classy party. He's having a great night. I know. He says there must have been 200 people there and not one fight. Right. Like that just, That's very... I'm from Brooklyn. Right. How do you um, get 200 people together and nobody fights? Right. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, so, she asks, what were you and Henry Kissinger huddled about? Which and is funny. He says that he just wanted my recipe for sausage and peppers. So, so after the party, they took they went on a little tour of Brooklyn. So he took her oh, yeah, that's right. in the Jag <laughs> and he drove through Brooklyn. Yeah. And she's like, oh, and she had a great time. She's yeah, I like, think I, she was impressed. Yeah, she's like, I never knew there were so many laundromats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, but he says he just wanted her to see the real New York. And he had a red Jaguar, so okay, the red Jaguar is still red, um, and a beautiful woman with him, so he figured right, he good. had to take a spin through the old neighborhood. Good continuity. Yeah, and, and, and taking the Jag was better than the limousine, even though he had to stick his head through the sunroof and then steer with his feet. I know. I think Angela would be pretty <laughs> pissed off if she knew. I knew any of that. But and I how mean, do you steer with your feet without, how do you work the gas and the, the brake? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe That's she... neither here nor there. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Very Tony. He probably figured out a way to do right. it. Right. But you know what? I'm sure it's already been done on a date that Mona took that car out on it. That's anyway. true. That is a good um, point. So he, you know, he tells her that he's had a really great night. And she yep. says, well, who says that it's over? So. Right. Oh, boy. Now we cut back to the Maselli Bauer house. And Angela's sitting in the living room. And Mona comes in. Angela's not even in comfortable clothes yet. Like, she's still wearing the outfit no. she's been wearing all day in so the living uptight. room. So yeah. tight. Like, come on. Get in the pajamas. <laughs> so Mona comes in and she's like, oh, my God, the Jaguar's been stolen. <laughs> it's not in the driveway. And she knows darn well what I, she's exactly. doing. Exactly. And a- Angela says, no, Mother, Tony has it. But Mona's mm-hmm. like, well, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. What could he still be doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Um. 
So they, she says, he, they found an after hours malt shop. Right. But Angela's like, you know, just because it's late, it doesn't mean that that's what's happening. You're just coming in, and I'm sure you weren't. But of course she was. Of course. And Mona. Right. It's Mona. <laughs> yeah. Mona was out on Even it. if Mona wasn't, she's just going to say she was because she has to keep her street cred. That's right. Reputation. Whatever that is. Right. So... Mona says, right about now, she says, you sent Tony out to land this account, and right about now, they're lighting up the runway and lowering the landing gear. (laughs) I love that line. Um, But Angela says that she did not send him out there to land this account. Um, But she's starting to realize that this woman had ulterior motives when she asked Tony to go out with her. Well, she saw the calendar. Hello. Right. (laughs) I mean, he's wearing nothing but an apron. Right. Um, also, Mona has on some pretty badass leather pants in this scene. Yeah, she well, had them well, on the whole episode? I don't think I noticed I them know. before. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's like, okay, you're right. I was just kidding myself. So whether or not she did it intentionally, she basically did the thing that she didn't want to do if Mr. Pache had actually uh, shown up instead of his daughter. Right, which is get an escort. Right. Well, or so, a, whatever. I don't know what to say anymore. She... No, I, I think escort's fine. Escort. Um, um, but yeah, so she's realizing now, she's like, I compromised another human being for my own personal gain. And Mona's like, yeah, Tony. But now Mona's like being all know, like comforting loving and comforting and, <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Like, where, where's that? Where's that been her whole life? No. But I love how Angela says, um, I should get a wide brim fedora. And a pink Eldorado. Right, a pimp reference. Right, that is a it's pimp fantastic. reference. But, and then also you can tell that Angela is very visibly upset because she takes off her oversized glasses. <laughs> and that's how you know it's an intense moment because she's right. really concentrating. Yes, she's very upset. And she says, Mother, do you know what I really am? And Mona says, a brunette? <laughs> Uh, and of course, always a right dig. Back, even kicking her while she's down. I know, even comforting her, and she has to do it. She yes. has to say something. So they go back to Tony and Jean Viev in the hotel room, and they're dancing. They're having a great time. He dips her. There's some kind of French song playing in the background. How? I mean, maybe they were just like a French a radio station. Song and we didn't know it. I don't, I don't think so. A popular French song. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's like, it's it sounds like an older song, whether it's French or not. Mm. Um, but yeah, how they found like a French radio station, we're, we're not going to ask. We're just going to go with it. I know, just um, do, yeah, sure. He dips her. She says, very nice. He says, it's a French dip. I mean, that's a fancy hotel. So at the time, there may have been a, a turntable with... Some oh, records. Well, that's true. Just like now, they have, a lot of them have Bluetooth Speakers radios. In them. Or, yeah, yeah. Know, All right, that's true. We'll go. I with don't that. know. I'm just throwing that yeah, out. Who there. knows? Um, and he says to her, like, I never knew somebody so rich and so famous could be so much fun. And she says, you should see Queen Elizabeth after a couple of, couple of beers. <laughs> I know, right? Like, like it's <laughs> insinuating Queen Elizabeth just throws down <laughs> beers. Um. Jean Viev says, you know what I like about you, Tony? Everything. So oh boy. They're getting along quite well. Tony does that. So he's done this another time. He gets, when, when Tony Maselli is going in for love, he does this little lip lick mm. and then like goes in for a kiss. And I noticed he did that with that girl from the Thanksgiving at Mrs. Rosini's, ep- Mrs. Rosini episode. And he's going in for it here. Mm. So he's all in. Like... He will gladly have sex with this woman tonight. Right. And I, but see, I think this is an interesting. I mean, they're getting along well. It's a blind date that ended up going well. Right. But, you know, in Angela's mind, you, she feels like Jean Viev is like, you know, if you show me a good time and you take care of me, then I'm going to give you this account. Right. So she thinks that Tony actually going through with this might be what's going to mean that she gets the account or she doesn't. And she's thinking about it. Now, are we kind of just sort of showing the differences between women and men when it comes to sex? Because Tony spends most of his time trying to have sex, where if a woman was in this position, 
unless it was Mona or someone who just really enjoyed having sex with a, a variety of people, they may not feel the same way. And they would feel taken advantage of or True. used. Yeah. So Angela's really coming at this from her perspective of what it would mean for her. So Genevieve says, okay, she says something in French, and Tony's like, does that mean you're going to go slip into something more comfortable? <laughs> right, and then she's like, oh, you're bilingual too. <laughs> yeah. So she kind of like takes his tie off and then goes into the bedroom and shuts the door. So he's super excited. He's, he's so excited. He's dancing he's like an dancing. asshole in the middle of the living Yeah, so I don't, I mean, did men dance right before they're going to have sex? I don't, I Like don't, a single man? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember dancing, but I don't remember having a lot of sex when I was single. So I um, didn't either. Yeah, so he's dancing around and someone knocks on the door <laughs> and he thinks it's room service. And right. he's like, oh, what am I going to tip this person? So he opens the door and it's Angela. And he's like, what are you doing here? Right, all right. totally ruining the evening. Right. And she says, I'm correcting a grievous wrong. <laughs> And you can see behind them that they are in room 913. Right. And he, he says, can't you go do that in 914? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to point out something about the set here, which is if you look in the mirror behind Tony, you can see the reflection of another door. Oh, interesting. So yeah, another really, closed hotel door. Yeah. Did they really build like a hotel hallway well, set? they would have had to. That we just see there? Or... Or did they just prop up a door right, and, and they angled it so you could see it in the mirror, mirror which is yeah, probably maybe. what they did. Um, Interesting. Now this I didn't is, even notice that. This is my favorite part when Tony says, will you come back in 20 minutes? minutes. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> 20 minutes. But then he's like, oh, ma- make it 30. Oh, okay, maybe 45. 45 tops. 45 tops. <laughs> Like, Unless what? there's a necktie hanging on the door, then go home. Right. And she says, where is jean He says, she's slipping into something French. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, okay, well, then I got here just in time. Um, and she says, you know, Tony, I think you may have gotten the impression when I sent you out there this week, uh, this evening that I really wanted you to be nice to jean to help me land this account. And Tony's like, I'll be nice. I'll be so nice. (laughs) But Angela's like, it's wrong for me to use you like this. And he just wants to get her out of this hotel room at this point. He doesn't care whether or not he's being used to land the account. He's just excited. It's a sex night and he wants her to go. She tells him, I was blinded by a $10 million million account and I can't let you sacrifice yourself. But Tony says, I sacrificed myself for a lot less. <laughs> Sometimes for nothing. Sometimes it even costs me dinner and a movie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good point. So he's basically like, I had a fantastic night. Normally when I go out on a date, this is the ultimate ending. This is the goal. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, and it's probably one of the best he would ever. Right. It's been handed to me. This woman's beautiful. It's this it's amazing hotel, hotel he would never be in. Right. They can order room service afterwards. Right. So, He's like, this to him, this is a fabulous evening. Exactly. So now Genevieve comes out in her something French. Mm-hmm. She sees Angela there and she's asked, What are you doing here? Right. Tony says she's correcting a grievous wrong by leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to get her out. Right. And um, I also I, I have to mention that Angela looks like the abominable snow. Abominable. 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 I'm saying that right. Now you're making me say that. The Yeti in this jacket. The jacket is so wide across the top. This looks like she's wearing football pads. (laughs) Again. Because it's probably the shirt underneath the jacket has pads. Oh, it does. It has pads. pads. And then the jacket has pads. Yeah. And then the hair kind of blends into the color of the jacket. I know. And the collar's popped. (laughs) It is. Um, So she says tells jean Riev, you know ever since i got into advertising an account like this has been a dream like really okay um and so i was willing to give you anything and i should have just stopped at the flowers and the fruit and the champagne and the don perion yeah <laughs> so she tells her like tony is an honorable man and you know this isn't this isn't right but 
Jean Via was like, I don't, I don't really know what you're talking about. So, right, we got, right. we're here <laughs> hanging out in this hotel room. Right. Um, but Tony's like, can I have a moment and <laughs> with with her? And then Jean Via says it to have a, and he's like, he's getting like kind of caught on his words. And she says, a tete de tete. Is right. that what it is? A tete de tete. Yes. <laughs> he says. No, nothing like that. I just want to talk to her. Yeah, right. She she says, no, nothing like that. Well, the definition of a tete-a-tete means a private conversation between two persons. (laughs) This is so So funny. funny. He had no idea, and he thinks it's something bad. Classic Tony. So We're just going to talk. That's what he says. He's... She say, he says nothing like that. We're just going to talk, right. which is exactly, exactly what, what it means. A tete yeah. tete means. So he's telling Angela, like, look, you're. I mean, you're. We're talking ten million dollars here, and she's like, well, we only we only take one one percent of that. Right. He's like, okay, a, a one one million dollars, and he's like, you're willing to give that up, you know, because you think that I don't want to be here. Right. Um. So he's pretty. He's kind of like impressed and flattered that. Angela would not, you know, would not want him to sacrifice himself in her words for right. the account. She's willing to give up. I don't think he'd up. have a problem sacrificing. Oh, absolutely himself. not. Tony was into this. Right. But maybe Angela, oh, the cat's in the tree again. I know. Can you, if you guys can hear ornaments God. jingling, that's why. Um, but maybe this has a little bit more to do with the fact that Angela doesn't want him to have sex with her. Right, that's what I think. Yeah, by her refusing to leave. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. you would think she he would be like it's going well, it's fine, go. Right, right. So like she is the, her moral compass is that you know what I mean? Like right. I got to stop this. Yeah. You're an innocent victim. <laughs> right. So Tony's having the night of his life. Right. He went through Brooklyn in the yeah in the Ferrari. Yeah, this is definitely a Jag. Like, what is it? A Jag. Top top five dates in the last ten years, right? Probably. With a French woman. Right. I mean, he is having a night of his life. Um, so Genevieve overhears her conversation and is like, you know, I think that something is going on wrong here because, you know, you don't have to sacrifice <laughs> right. anything. This has nothing to do with the account. I've already decided to give it to Wallace and McQuaid. Um, you know, French. The French never mix business and pleasure. Right. So hanging out with Tony was just an added benefit for her. Um, <laughs> and after she says, we don't mix business with pleasure, Tony says, words to live by. Right. And he looks at Angela. <laughs> it's funny. So now Angela's all like, oh, okay, well, I've created a very awkward situation and I should leave. So now mm-hmm. she wants to leave. Um, and jean Viev's like, yes, there is one too, too many, many people here. People. Yeah. <laughs> but then she says she's going to bed. Right. Um, Tony dies inside a little tiny bit right know. here. Night ruin. I mean, think about what he thought he was going to happen <laughs> and what actually happened. Now he's going home. The worst. He's going home to his little bed in his little house. But of course she away. is convinced that there is something between Tony. Right. So she's... What is that? <laughs> it's... Oh my gosh. It's like in Christmas Vacation when the squirrel's in the tree. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, I'm going to keep... I'm not stopping. I'm okay. going to keep going. No. Um, yeah. So yeah, she's like, you know... I can definitely see that there's something between the two of you. Like, you are two people who care about each other very much. Right. She Even even she sees it. And she lives... She's not even from here. Right. And she's only <laughs> she's, meant she's them only met just them that day. For, right. <laughs> yeah. So everybody um, knows. And she's probably like, well, I'm not going to sleep with this guy knowing that he's probably, you know, has feelings for this other woman anyway. Right. So she leaves. She goes to bed. She's very excited. She's going to go watch David Letterman. <laughs> right, which is funny. <laughs> um, she's like, you know, I could have had sex. I could watch Letterman. It's really all the same. Like, right. it's fine with Doesn't me. Doesn't matter. I might even order some room service still on my own. Um, so then uh, Angela and Tony are like, I mean, there's. do you see things? Right, are you confused? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, not, not I'm not confused. Like, we know what's going on. Right. So Meanwhile. they decide that they're going to go get beer and pizza. And Tony knows this great little place over in Brooklyn that's right next to an all-night laundromat. Right. So all they're right. taking There's the, the jag. laundromat. A joke again. Yeah. So now he's going to drive through Brooklyn again with another well, one. How did Angela get there? You think she took the station wagon? Yeah, maybe she took the, the station wagon if they still have it. Or yeah, I guess. Or she took the van. <laughs> maybe. And Angela drove the van over to the hotel. 
I wanted to see. I want to see that B-roll of her just driving the van over. Because <laughs> like, where are they? They're probably in New York City, right? Yes, yeah, she guys said the nicest hotel. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so now even so, it's what one thirty in the morning. No, it's even later. Right, because it was one thirty when they got to the house. By the when time Mona Angela, came back to the house. Yeah, by the time Angela got back into the city. Right. To get to Tony, and then they're going to go drive to Brooklyn from New York City now still? Yeah, I guess. Okay, it's, it's going to be a long gonna, night. Yeah, they're not going to sleep. Okay. Um, Reading too much into that, <laughs> that part of it. But so then my other favorite part is right before Tony leaves, he sings that terrible French song. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not going to say the French song was terrible, but Tony's singing of oh, the French bad. song. And so he's like all flat, just like singing a little line back into the room. Right. And um, Angela drags him out. And then they go okay. back to... Now the dog and the cat are fighting. Uh, they go back to... Uh, back to the kitchen again, and Tony's on the phone with Henry Kissinger. Yes. <laughs> and they, he's something about, something about cooking the pepper. You brown the sausages, then you cook the peppers. Right, <laughs> yes. He's coaxing him through a sausage and peppers recipe. Like, why would Henry Kissinger call Tony at the house? <laughs> because. Silly. Very, yeah. just Tony was Because he was very charming. Right, exactly. It was very charming. Um, yeah, and they just exchanged numbers at the embassy, I guess. So, or he looked him up in the phone book. All right. <laughs> Um, so Samantha's like, what's wrong with this guy that he can't even make sausage and peppers? Meanwhile, he got, and, and I guess there's a joke there because he, Tony says something about like, he can't know everything or do everything or whatever. And, uh, Kissinger got a medal of honor or, um, what is it? The president gives you, is that a medal of honor? A valor? Is that yeah, what Yeah, I guess. He got one of those. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the guy kind of had a career. Right, and he so said... He's like, everybody's got their strengths. That's right. what it is. And T- Tony said that he probably would have messed up the Middle East. Right, so which is, have... must have been a Kissinger. Right. Maybe was successful in the Middle East. So, now Jonathan comes in, and he has... Tony's bottle of Peche fragrance. Mm, fancy. And, fancy. And Tony's like, Jonathan, what did you do? Like, you used half the bottle. And Jonathan's like, no, I only use a little bit. But Grover used the rest. Mm. And then Grover comes in through the door. And there's a French poodle following him. I know. Mm. <laughs> but that's funny because it tied Grover back into the... like this The is, mix. Yeah. This this tag is kind of a cute sort of button. Like, they call back to the Henry Kissinger joke. Mm-hmm. Grover's back. And Tony was making the French poodle joke. And now a little French poodle is following Grover. And he's super excited about yeah, the poodle. Yeah, they're going in the living room. Yeah. He doesn't like these dog jokes either because he thinks... Dogs are beautiful. Right. Female dogs are pretty. Right. <laughs> and so then Tony's like, this stuff really works. And he's very excited. And that is the end of the episode. It's ridiculous. Because I'm sure Tony needs Peche fragrance. Right. To, to get to a woman. Meet, meet women. Right. Some woman saw him on a calendar and then just wanted to take him home. Right. Come on. Okay. So I think I go first for reading for this one. Oh, that means I go first for... I know who the it, boss is. It would have been helpful if I had written a rating down, but I'm going to give this episode a seven point five. Okay. Um, it's I I really enjoyed the subject matter. I thought it was kind of a brave storyline for them to do, considering the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it's funny that it was completely acceptable to have the word hooker on a family show. Yeah. I, I mean, run it was into the this, 80s, but yeah, yeah. I ran into this also with the wa- the girls watching um, Doctor Quinn, Medicine Woman, which that was filmed in the nineties, but it takes place in the uh, yeah. When does it take place? Eighteen hundreds, yeah. I think. And so there is a bar in town that is a brothel. Yeah. And there's an episode where Myra, who's one of the women who works there was with a guy and he died in the middle of it and Jeez. so she goes to get dr quinn to help and then the girls were like what happened how did he die and i was and i was like uh, I know. Uh. so i was like oh she they the men pay her to entertain them and so she was probably telling him a joke and he was laughing and then he died right so that's telling how him i a got joke. around that yeah, by just good. saying that they yeah. entertained but yeah i'm surprised so, you didn't just tell him what's going on i know like i mean you, you, you're very blunt sometimes with the children <laughs> i am but it, no that's what i mean you tell them the truth you tell yeah, them the truth yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's something but that's that a difficult we, one to just no, explain know, just on like joking. a thursday afternoon <laughs> no i'm not joking i was completely <laughs> yeah. joking 
Um, but yeah, I just like, did we even question what hooker meant when we were kids or did no, it? No, I we just, just knew not... what it was and I didn't. Yeah, I guess. I, I think I, I think I knew. I mean, it somewhat, probably I knew it when this episode came out because that would have been like 14. I don't yeah, know. I would have been 10 and I honestly don't remember what if, what I even would have thought about oh. it. Well, there's that. Yeah, time to go out. I yeah. haven't heard that in a while. So I think maybe I'll ring that bell every time it's my <laughs> turn for the rating or I have something to say. I'll just kick the bell. Yeah, nice. Um, I'm right there with you. I'd say it's about a 7.5. Nice. I thought it was a pretty solid episode, and right? And I think there were some interesting twists and turns in it, how the fact that it was supposed to be a man coming at first and then the tables turn and it was a woman mm-hmm. um, and still had kind of the same storyline in a way, but right. But it was, um, uh, it was Tony going out on the date and all that. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I thought it was a good episode. Yeah. Overall good. Nice. Who's the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. So uh, this is hard. I mean, for it, me. Yeah. I hope it's as hard for you. Um, I, it was. I, I mean, I really don't know, but I'm going to just go with Tony. Okay. Because I still think he, I mean, he didn't know what was going on. He got blindsided with this whole date thing. Now, obviously, when he saw her, he was like, I'm your date, whatever. I'm in. He, yeah, and he went out and he did it. And and, um, and actually, was going to have fun the end of the night or whatever. But <laughs> um I mean, I don't know. I still think, I guess, he was kind of running things that was in control. Um, but, I mean, I don't have any real good reason. I mean, it's a toss-up to me. But um, but I still think, at, in the end, I, you know, at the end, Tony had fun. I don't, you know, I don't think he felt like he was being used. Yeah. So, I don't know. That was hard. That was hard for me. I almost went with Tony, but I ended up going with Mona because... Mm. Mona was like, you can't send Tony out on a date. Right, that's and true. And then she was like, Angela, tell him how it's not a blind date. Right, that's true. Yeah. And then... A lot of good points. After Tony went out, she was like, he's going to have sex with her. <laughs> and Angela was like, no, no, really, he's going to have sex with her. And then sent Angela there to stop it. And the only reason I didn't say Tony was the boss because he just wasn't like, I want to have sex tonight. Please leave. <laughs> right. Exactly. That would have made him the boss. <laughs> That's so true. I know. It was tough. Mona is a good yeah. one, but that was a tough one. There's no real definitive boss to me. Yeah. But it's also that thing where, like, I feel a lot of times, you know, they just kind of use Mona's character for that purpose. Like, she has to be the one that come in and either derail their fun. Right. Uh, get them to cool their jets. Tell yeah. them how they're being. <laughs> cool How jets. they're wrong. You know. Right. So, I think that's the only reason why she was my choice for this one. Um, that's good. That's a good one. It's a good choice. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So, you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram, Who's the Boss Pod one on Twitter, or if you go on Facebook, we have a page, the Who's the Boss podcast page. Or you can go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast. And you, there's a little button there. You can hit leave a message and you can um, leave a message and then we'll play it on another show. That is all. Okay. We don't have a song. I keep mm. meaning to look some more up, but uh, this episode's I already mean, like how many an hour more, anyway. How many more could there be? Uh, there's got to be some stuff out there People on YouTube. Added more song. No, no, no. I have scoured. I'm, no, no. I'm talking about like Tony Danza performing oh, something. Oh, yeah, guy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's. I'm sure yeah. there's like an Alyssa Milano song That's out true. there. So right, right, I got to right. look. I just haven't done That's it. That's true. Yet. But okay. So the next episode we're going to cover is called. Hang on here. Oh, I, I would find out. Angela's new best friend. That's right. Oh, it's right there on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Angela's and new best friend. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this You're excited about this one. Yeah. So, um, Diane Wilmington is back. She's going to look different than she has before. Um, and she moves in with the Miss Ellie Bowers. Oh, boy. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. Bye. See ya. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and tell all your friends and give you a big pat on the back. Bye. I added some extra. <laughs>